Hello everyone and welcome once again to Artificial Intelligence. As always, I'm Bart Massey. As always, I hope you're staying safe and well out there in these difficult times. Once again, I have the pleasure of welcoming and introducing our guest lecturer, Yegane Jalalpur, who is TA for our course this quarter and quite expert in machine learning methods, who is going to tell us today about methods of machine learning, various approaches to doing the thing known as machine learning. I'm really looking forward to it, so let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Yagane. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some different general machine learning methods. Let's go to brute force. So as you all know, brute force collects all the data and solutions and tests to see if the solution is there. With uh, brute force, we can collect training instances in a bag. Then we pick the matching training instances from the bag and classify target identically. The problems with these methods are like um, there are there may be no matches or there may be multiple matches. Then the other problem is that the size of the bag may be too big because cases are too many. And also another problem is that having so many instances inside the bag makes the classifiers really slow. So there is an algorithm called minimum distance voting, or it is also known as KNN or K nearest neighbor. KNN or K nearest neighbor is a simple classification uh, method in machine learning. It is very commonly used uh, when there is little to no information about the distribution of the data. Minimum distance voting helps with some of the problems of the brute force because we don't have to look at all the possibilities that exist in the bag of possibilities. Now let's talk a little bit about how KNN works. So uh, we need to start with a data set with different categories. I um, added this figure here. So as you can see, there are two different categories. There is one blue triangle category here, and there is one red circle category here. So we call them class A and class B. And there is one unknown data point in this 2D plot that we want to see where this data belongs to. So one, one of the other things that we have to do is that we initially need to choose the number of K, which helps us to decide how many closest data points we want to consider in um, our computation. So for this example, the K is equal to four. So it means that we have to find four closest neighbor to the unknown data point in order to find the, the relevant category um, or the class for this unknown uh, data point. Uh, we want to see by adding a new data point um, how uh, we want to find the category that it belongs to, right? So for this aim, we use um, different metric, we can use different metrics to calculate the distance of this point to any other points. In this uh, 2D uh, world measurement, um, it can be done by using uh, any uh, distance measurements, of a, for example, Euclidean distance or Manhattan distance. Uh, and uh, we need to hear when we are trying to find uh, the distances, we need to count the roads or the number of data points in each category to see um, to what category the new data is closest to. So here, as we, um, as we computed the distances and these one, two, three, and four uh, data points uh, came out to be the closest to this green data point, we uh, go and count how many of the red cat, um, how many data points or how many votes have these 
red category. So we see that um, red has three points. And if you do the same for the blue category or class, we see that the blue has uh, one vote. So in this case, green uh, goes to the red class or red category because it has the highest word. As um, I said, we assign the we uh, we then it is it, it is how we assign the new data point to the category that we saw the most votes from uh, the neighbors that are coming from there. Um, and one thing about uh, coming out from this 2D plot and coming back to the class that uh, we're uh, working on the projects on. Uh, so for this class, uh, we are using uh, more Boolean data and uh, Hamming distance is uh, for computing the distance of two different variables um, in Boolean data is very useful. Um, so for a Hamming distance of two values of v1 and v2 is equal to the sum of the results of their exclusive or of their bits. In a simpler word, some of the um, differences of their bits. So easier than that, like it can be, we can get the number of the times that it um, correspond, the, the corresponding bits are different. So let's do both ways. So let's look at this example that we have here, 111 and 101. Generally looking at this, we can quickly say how many bits are different here. So the middle bit is one on the first variable and on the second variable. Um, uh, so the, uh, the difference of the middle bit for V1 and V2 is this middle bit. So that's why we can say the Hamming distance of this example is one. And we can do something else. We can also do um, X or S, as you can see, uh, I've done it here. And if we uh, do an uh, exclusive or here, we get to a point that we have zero, one, and zero. And if we, as we can see here, if we sum however uh, number of ones we have here, we get to the Hamming distance of equal to one. All right. And this is how um, this work also for Boolean uh, data. Let's go and um, talk a little bit more about naive Bayes learning. Uh, so we already, on the previous lectures, we covered um, naive uh, Bayesian learning and uh, Binary set in uh, binary settings, uh, we count the number of correctness of each feature in positive and negative setting. Then we compare underestimates of probabilities using products. Um, because of log properties, we use logs to turn products into summations, and we use M separation to get accurate products. Uh, now let's talk about decision trees and ID tree. ID tree or iterative um, dichotomizer tree is a um, useful algorithm to build a decision tree from a data set. ID tree was the work of uh, Ross Greenland. I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He was a researcher to be mainly focusing on decision trees and data mining. And ID tree was one of his research projects. ID tree is a useful machine learning algorithm, and this is how it works. So ID tree is a um, uh, so uh, first of all uh, we have to um, greedily pick a descriptive feature 
and separated training set into two subsets. Here we have positives and negatives, and we want to do this split as well as possible. So then on each subset, we're going to issue a recursive call to pick another feature trying to improve the split. We will continue to do so, to, to do, to do so until there's almost one class left and there is nothing left to be splitted. All right, so there is another thing, uh, uh, there is another algorithm that I wanna talk about, which is information gain. Information gain is an algorithm to help us in order to find the right to split in our decision trees. Uh, as the complexity of um, finding the split increases, meaning that the data gets more impure, we would need more information to be able to find a great split. Uh, what I mean by pure split is that um, it's an split with the uniform data or, or something which uh, has which has great partition, and um, here, uh, as we can see, uh, for information gain, there is a computation that I'm gonna go through. But let me talk a little bit uh, more about the other side, which is talking about how information gain is computed. Information gain uh, can be computed um, in a bigger picture one minus entropy. And what is entropy? Entropy tells us how impure one subset or a split is. And I think um, putting purity and impurity together, purity, uh, the ones, purity means that it's like if the split consists of only one category of data and impurity means uh, the opposite of it. It means that like, uh, how much of a mixture is in that split. Okay, so uh, let's look at these uh, formulas that we have. For, uh, so we, ha we select next feature in the tree in order to maximize information gain. And uh, in order to do, do, to do so, we have a uh, recall as a u of s equals to sum of x in zero and one, uh, negated by probability of x in s times log of probability of x in s. So, um, and where uh, probability of x in s equals to wherever um, c equals to s of s over the size of s. Now, if we want to compute the information gain delta u for each feature f, uh, first uh, let's let's consider s plus and s minus. S plus means uh, the positive uh, side when when f is equal to one, and s negative means when um, the feature of f is equal to zero. Uh, and delta u is equal to u of s minus s plus over the size of s times u of s plus minus uh, uh, size of s minus or s negative over s times u of s minus. So uh, for if, so the, the other th uh, really good thing about information gain is that information gain helps us to avoid overfeeding um, gain is probably just training uh, set anomaly. It stops when a gain from best split is below some threshold. And also, uh, greedy is not optimal. And um, we need a mild independence, and mild independence assumption. All right, let's jump to a really interesting topic, which is perceptrons that uh, probably a lot of you already uh, studied it and seen it somewhere. So uh, there is a paper here uh, mentioned as artificial neuron uh, prepared at all. It, this paper is the basis of neural nets on your spare time 
you should go and read this paper if you're interested. It is recommended. Uh, perceptrons handles continuous inputs and outputs. Uh, well, the binaries for, for this class. The idea is to predict the binary class as a threshold weight at some of the features. So let's look at this figure. Um, so in this figure, we, we see different inputs coming from, uh, from the uh, front line. So we have x1, x2, x3, so forth till xn. And x uh, in machine learning world um, oftentimes is called as input. And um, these are the indexes of them. So here, as you can see, all these um, inputs also have some weights that they're going to get multiplied uh, with each other, as we can see here. And uh, what we're uh, going to do that uh, there is also a weight zero. Uh, times one, which is this uh, one is always constant and uh, we call it bias or uh, the threshold of our um, neural net. Uh, so when uh, these all are getting multiplied and then get uh, we get a weighted sum, this goes through a uh, activation function to either fire the neuron, meaning that like set the neuron onto one or not. Different activation functions uh, that can be used are sigmoid function, logistic function, ReLU, and so forth. Uh, one uh, really general thing about perceptrons is that the perceptron is the very basic unit of neural nets. And the, the idea of the perceptron got the, got the idea of, uh, from creating, in order to create something similar to human's brains, neural nets. Okay, let's go to the uh, next slide and talk a little bit more about perceptrons. So uh, in per, uh, perceptrons, training consists of learning appropriate weights, V, W, and uh, we assign some initial weights as we saw uh, on the previous figure. We feed each training instances through the perceptron and adjust the weights uh, towards the true classification. And at, uh, at the end, we run all the training instances repeatedly until the average accuracy isn't getting any better. So uh, one thing that I want to um, mention here when we are adjusting the weights, so we have uh, wi plus equal to a of c minus one and xi and w of zero plus equal to a c minus y. Here, uh, y is the unthresholded output and um, we need to remember that c and x are zero or one and a is the learning rate. Um, you can see it uh, someplace else as alpha two but in the smaller learning rate, means more reliable convergence and larger learning rate can mean faster learning or divergence. And uh, this was machine learning methods lecture. Thank you for watching. See you guys later. And there you have it. Thanks again to Yagane for presenting this material in a really skilled and entertaining fashion. Again, I hope you all stay safe and well out there. Thanks for listening to this, and we hope to talk to you again real soon.